Case 10. Okay, so um, from low power here, there's the punch. There's a few things going through my mind. Um, you know, I'm seeing, I'm almost wondering if there's like a granulomatous component with like the east west, um, like light purple cells up in the um, papillary dermis. You know, just like a tuberculoid leprosy. Um, I'm also seeing some inflammation down. Um, you know, the hair follicles, so then that kind of makes me think, you know, is this like a, maybe like a tumid lupus or neutrophilic gastroenterogenitis. Um, but you can also see that the hair follicles are, at least the one on the right here, is pretty, um, necrotic. Yes. It's like it's dying. And, um, going in even closer, you can kind of start seeing, um, how a lot of these cells have those three M's to them. Yeah, a couple in here. Um, They're mostly dead, so it's hard to see the viral change, but you can see kind of the margination, uh, maybe a touch of molding here and there. And then here, these are like the viral cells that are dead, right? And they're acantholytic and separated apart. So you kind of, sometimes you have to like kind of look through all the mess and death to try to see the herpes change. But that's where right away you recognize the clue, right? It's dead. So the answer then is, sorry, I, yeah. I cut you yeah, off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would think it's either herpes um, simplex or zoster, and because it's involving the follicles, I think you would favor more of a zoster. Yeah, very good. So uh, follicular and particularly sebaceous gland necrosis uh, and look, it's dirty necrosis with neutrophils and fragments of nuclear debris here. Just that same kind of necrosis in the epidermis, we think of herpes. If you see that around the necrotic hair follicle or sebaceous gland right away, to me, that's like herpes until I prove otherwise, uh, because it's a really good clue for herpes. And like you said, herpes um, involving the hair follicle tends to be more common in, in varicella zoster um, than in simplex. Um, the cytopathic change is the same, but the idea is that the, in zoster, the, the VZV, a herpes virus from the dorsal root sensory ganglion, reactivates, spreads out through the sensory nerves. And the theory that some have had is that it may travel up the nerves to the root of a hair follicle, and that's why the follicles can sometimes get infected first before infection of the overlying epidermis. Because look, here, the epidermis is totally normal. I mean, well, a little bit of sponge or reactive change, but no blister, no necrosis, no viral change. If you just had a shave biopsy, we would have no idea this was herpes. So it's a good thing to know about and to think about that if you don't have vesicular lesions yet and you're thinking about herpes zoster from the clinical appearance, a punch biopsy may serve you well trying to get around some follicular openings because like in this case, a shave would miss the diagnosis, okay? The other thing I've noticed before in herpes is like you pointed out, and I love that, that you pointed out brisk, superficial and deep perivascular inflammation, like the kind of inflammation you'd see in lupus or the, in other diseases. So, um, and in that case, even though the infiltrate in the, around the follicle and around the blister and necrosis of the epidermis usually has neutrophils in it, I often see lymphohistiocytic infiltrate without neutrophils around the vessels in herpes. And, and we sometimes don't pay attention to this because we get focused on the viral change, which of course is important. But do keep that in mind if there, if you don't see the other changes of herpes, but there's a clinical suspicion and you see superficial and deep lymphocytic infiltrate, cut deeper, go looking for herpes. I've seen lichenoid infiltrate that on deepers ended up being herpes. I've seen necrotic ulcers that if I look carefully at the edge or did deepers, I found herpes. I've heard reports rarely of like leukocytoclastic vasculitis or perivascular infiltrate only that was positive for herpes on PCR. Um, I don't, I've not recognized the case of that yet in my practice, although perhaps I've overlooked it uh, because those can be challenging. So uh, always be aware of herpes. And a lot of times now you guys are doing the PCR right off the bat if you have a suspicion for it. But sometimes herpes can have a sneaky presentation and not be suspected. Um, uh, and I've seen cases like that. So uh, follicular necrosis is very good for VZV. And again, here, that, that pattern of necrotic keratinocytes even though I can't see the good the good uh, nuclear changes, that is herpes until proven otherwise. And if you can't find an area that's convincing, do the immunostain, and it'll usually light up this stuff even if it's necrotic. 
So usually the herpes, if you have to use the immunostain, the immunostain is usually pretty strongly positive and, and is very uh, helpful if you are in doubt. All right. So herpetic folliculitis, more common in varicella zoster.